weekly update. Even more extreme close-up. Friday, July 16th. Okay, uh, Realstone Aslan presents When Did You Stop Reading Cerebus? Uh, David Birdsong uh, sent me this and I thought, oh boy, this, this will be good, in quotation marks. Uh, but actually it is. It's, it's really, really quite good, well put together. Uh, one of those uh, strange things where uh, it's an 82-page book and uh, 51 pages are the principal essay and then it's got some more stuff in the back which isn't apparent until you're actually reading it. And um, uh, 51 pages when what you're doing is discussing a 6,000 page graphic novel is obviously a um, exponential compression of its subject. So we're kind of following along with that because this is a 51 page book about the 6,000 page graphic novel and uh, I'm going to be covering it Let's see, a minute 17 so far uh, in a weekly update, uh, maybe a couple of more minutes. Might be a two-parter, might be a three-parter, uh, but eventually we're getting to the point where it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, uh, Andrew could send me a postcard about my weekly updates and then uh, I could write something on a postage stamp and send it to him about his postcard. Um, who knows, maybe that's, maybe that's what would happen. Uh, anyway, uh, continuing to hold up the book and uh, definitely recommending it. If, uh, if you're one of those people that wants to read a book about uh, one man's experiences with the 6,000 six page graphic novel, uh, well, there's only one of them right now. Uh, page 15, uh, quoting him, The biggest problem with reading Cerebus is Dave Sims' chronic inability to stick to the point. Uh, I would answer that saying, I think this is a misreading of the fact that Cerebus is a graphic novel about a character with a chronic inability to stick to the point. Cerebus is easily and relentlessly distracted. Uh, that's the comedia which is his life. You, as an author, can't stick to the point in the conventional sense of the phrase if your character isn't by inclination someone who sticks to the point. Uh, but the overall point to me is that even for people who are unable to stick to the point, the point still sticks to them. Destiny and predestination, which are literarily unfashionable, I think, for the reason that they're inescapable. Uh, most authors try to write themselves out of their predestined fates and only reinforce that fate. Uh, a microcosm of this is Andrew thinking uh, he knows how he's going to start his essay and then when he begins starting his essay he's unable to start it that way. Uh, I had another note on uh, page 49. Uh, it's interesting that he never spells Chawa correctly while being critical of my using her original Hebrew name as if it's some kind of affect, affectation on my part. And obviously he doesn't see that her being ob, almost universally known as Eve is the more genuinely peculiar core fact. It's one of those, uh, you really couldn't make that up, inexplicable inconsistencies. When and how and why did Chawa inexplicably become Eve? Adam the man is either Adam, two names, or Adam, one name. Why is Kawa different? So, uh, let's see how we're doing here. Four minutes and 24 seconds. Yeah, I think we better turn this into a two-parter because people on the internet start turning off mentally uh, when you get up towards five minutes. So, uh, that's going to be a wrap for this week. I hope you'll come back and join us next week.